हेलो एवरीवन सो वेलकम टू लेट्स क्रैक यूपीएससी सीएससी इंग्लिश विद एन एकेडमी एंड माय नेम इज विजय कुमार एंड आई हैव फाइव इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज आई हैव फाइव इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज एंड आई हैव अपीयर्ड फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज इंटरव्यू मोर देन ट्वाइस Uh, like twice and i have written my mains examination more than couple of times so despite of being a failure in this examination i have gained huge amount of knowledge so on this particular aspect of how to crack civil services from then i started teaching i and i started motivating many aspirants to crack civil services clear so in this regard like today's topic every day at 8:30 pm live i'll be coming up live for you so at 8:30 pm i'll be coming up with just one minute so every day at 8:30 at every day 8:30 i'll be coming up live for you and in such a way we will be discussing about some of the important topics which are present which are very much important for your preliminary examination clear and in such a way the today's topic which we are going to discuss that is just yes, one minute today's topic which we are going to discuss that is volcanism clear so volcanism is one of the most most important aspects we will see how it is formed and we will see what are the distribution areas before that let me say you about one of the largest air platform in india Uh, through which you can crack upsc csc clear so it is an academy through which you can crack upsc csc just by sitting at your home so please try to get the subscription done of an academy today itself so if you get the subscription done so you will be getting unlimited live classes along with that like you will be getting good recorded courses from the india's top educators so how actually this an academy platform runs to know about that particular thing here just before that i'll share you some details uh, what happens when you get the subscription done like you will be getting daily live classes daily live classes are nothing but they are two way communication process you will be getting two way communication in sense like you can ask the doubts you can uh, engage in discussion you can chat with your educator uh, you can attend the answer polls all these happens when the classes are going on clear so it's not like like only one way communication would be there which is present on let's crack upsc csc english channel clear so apart from that you will be getting live test uh, you will be getting live uh, test series on this platform and you will find some of the good quizzes so that you can evaluate your preparation along with that you will be getting some structured courses on the platform like uh, top educators they will create some structures for example if i started dealing up with polity i'll create a course structure of polity for the upcoming one month or two months then i'll be discussing those particular important topics which are important for prelims on that particular day and on that particular time here so apart from that you will be getting unlimited access <clears throat> it's now for example let's say you have missed a live lecture you can watch this uh, lecture uh, later on the recorded lecture would be available and you can watch this recorded lecture in number of times until you complete your subscription like for example let's say you have uh, took the subscription for 6 months you can watch these lectures for 6 month continuously so see these are some of the top educators on the platform we have more than 80 plus top educators on the platform uh, who deals with this upsc csc category then so you can see some of the most familiar faces uh, uh, like who are the top educators in the country they would teach on this particular platform so see uh, once you install the an academy learning app you will find a special column called as special classes clear so try to get on through this special classes the most important thing is once you see these special classes are free for you they are open for you and under the covid 19 uh, which is happening as of now due to the lockdown an academy is presenting 20000 plus live classes on an academy learning app so once try to see them Uh, if you like this will lectures you will get the confidence then preparation and these are the subscription prices which are present you can see per month 7200 3 month 18000 6 month 28000 12 month 36000 24 month 43000 200 so these are discounted prices if you want to get the discount for this price please try to use this code called as vk10 so once you use the code called as vk10 then only you will be available to take the discount of 10% so generally whenever i 
say aspirants to go for subscription i generally say them to take uh, longer subscriptions why because like with minimum amount of price they would be getting the subscription if you see just for 36000 you can get one year subscription and i also suggest you to compare this by just adding up 7200 to this 36000 you can get 24 month subscription so this is also best possible way where you can take the subscription of this particular platform clear so let's start up with the discussion today the volcanism so first you have this particular topic in your gs paper one right so volcanism is nothing but like uh, it is a process of generation of lava or magma clear so uh, the <clears throat> semi solid hot state which is present in the interior of that surface in the mantle it, it would be called as magma and when it erupts out it would be called as lava do remember this point clear so volcanism is a process of generation of magma and movement of magma under the pressure and erupting out and coming on to the surface and developing some of the landforms clear so this entire process would be considered as process of volcanism clear and you can see in general from the interior of that surface everyone know about the layers of that surface right the topmost layer is called as crust the second layer is called as mantle and the deep uh, inner layer would be called as core so in this three layers uh, in the upper portions of the mantle we would be having a chamber called as magma chamber so whereby this magma which is present in that zone that every time would be in a rotating manner like this magma under the high heat conditions what generally happens is this magma wouldn't be stable over there so hence in this magma chamber in the mantle we would be having a development of cell like structure it means the magma generally tends and rotates so magma chamber which is present in that magma chamber we would be experiencing development of some cellular structures which are called as convectional cells and these convectional cells are responsible for the movement of magma it's not like the magma which is moving that is nothing but a cell like structure and under that circumstances when the pressure would be increased on that particular magma chamber uh, for example let's say from any other zone of the world uh, we are having collision aspects of two continents or like one oceanic plate and one continental plate so oceanic plate tends to move down when compressional forces are applied the oceanic plate tends to move down and when the oceanic plate tends to move down it melts away and when this particular oceanic plate melts away that creates an extra magma in the magma chamber and already the magma chamber is filled like it is completely filled the volume and the space which has been occupied over there it is completely like it has 100% filling of that magma in that region so when this addition of pressure which is been created because of the subduction of the oceanic plate the magma which has been already created that tends to find a place to come out and in some specific zones of the world we can observe such kind of volcanic magma erupting out so because of disturbance which has been created in one particular zone of earth the magma from one particular zone of earth may come out like for example on the pacific ocean border we may have subduction and the volcanism might happen somewhere around uh, like um, in the in the central regions of mediterranean sea or in the regions of pacific ocean itself like in western pacific if we are having the subduction in eastern pacific we may have the eruption of volcanic magma so in this regard there is no connection that if subduction is happening over there then uh, the volcanic uh, the volcanism should also happen over there there is no particular kind of criteria for it clear so you can't even say that if uh, this is the place where uh, the subduction is happening subduction is nothing but when two plate collides with each other one plate subducts down so and that subduction process will result into forcefulness of volcanic man, uh, volcanism clear so do remember this point volcanism is a process of creation of magma eruption of magma under the pressure and heat conditions and creation of few landforms which are associated with that of this volcanic lava do remember this point clear and this particular volcanism which is present that may create some intrusive landforms and that may create some extrusive landforms associated with it do remember these points they are highly highly important for you clear <clears throat> 
and apart from this if you see these are some of the common things where in the zones of volcanism are present clear so like whenever uh, the volcanism happens on the continental crust you can see the volcanic bomb because that would be more catastrophic in nature and along with that we can also see the volcanic ash cloud and uh, you can see the main chimney or pipe through which the volcanic magma can come out and these are the secondary pipes you can see over here clear so these are the secondary pipes along with that uh, we can find a cone shaped structure most of the volcanism wherever it happens we can observe a cone like structure which would be created do remember this point most most important so there are some features which are common in every volcanic zone it's clear that we would be seeing in the landforms which would be developed further clear and volcanism if you see it can be categorized on the basis of its eruption we have different types of volcanism and one type of volcanism we can calculate on the basis of its frequency one uh, type of volcanism we can calculate on the basis of its intensity like for example if i say like volcanism it can be uh, said that the volcanism can be divided on the basis of its uh, frequency as three volcanic aspects one is active volcanism second is dormant volcanism and third is extinct volcanism like if you say active volcanism is nothing but in those zones where all volcanism is active so those volcanoes come under active volcanoes clear uh, in and around the pacific ocean belt if you open the atlas and see we would be finding some of the active volcanoes clear and uh, these active volcanoes they are formed at the convergent boundaries in general in general the active volcanism is found at uh, continental oceanic collision and oceanic oceanic collision do remember this point active volcanism is found at convergent plate boundaries and also at divergent plate boundaries but that is somewhat different volcanism clear so here if i am speaking about convergent boundary and divergent boundary if you are not understanding what convergent boundary and divergent boundary you are not good at geomorphology just go back to the basics of geomorphology please try to learn the plate tectonics theory so that you won't find any difficulties in understanding these kind of keywords called as convergent and divergent plate boundaries got this point so most of the active volcanism of the world they are present at the convergent boundaries and divergent boundaries clear so in convergent boundary also only at continental oceanic convergence and oceanic oceanic convergence we can see that near to the continental continental collision we can't observe the active volcanoes clear and in india if you see the active volcanism is present near uh, the andaman nicobar islands you can see india has two volcanic islands in general one is barren island one is narkondam and in both of these it is barren island which is active in nature do remember this point most most valuable point there are high chances please try to locate the barren island there are high chances that questions would be framing from this particular barren island try to see just google it and try to see it in wikipedia that's it clear any doubts on this and this is active volcanism and dormant volcanism uh, like since uh, centuries like um, it has it had continuous eruption but it has stopped in the recent past and we don't know what happens in the future it may erupt it may not erupt like in the future we may have the eruption of volcanism and we may not have the eruption of volcanism such kind of volcanic activities they are called as uh, dormant volcanoes clear this one minute they are called as dormant volcanoes clear with us and uh, like in the in and around regions of mediterranean sea african rift valley mid world belt we can observe these kind of dormant volcanoes next we can see about extinct volcanoes they have not erupted since centuries and there are also no maximum uh, chances that it will be erupting in the future such kind of volcanic volcanoes are considered as extinct volcanoes in the regions of great african rift valley we generally see these kind of extinct volcanoes clear so but there are chances that suddenly the extinct volcano may convert as um, a active volcano there are high chances that we may observe these kind of uh, extinct volcanoes which may convert suddenly as active volcanoes like for example mount krakato which is present in the indonesian uh, regions beneath the water it was extinct for some centuries 
but in the recent uh, 1970s and 80s it has erupted suddenly there was continuous volcanism in that mount krakato region so it was her it was said that when mount krakato has erupted clear the sound of mount krakato was heard until the turkey region of europe and until the japan region of asia and many thousands of people were killed and some hundreds of meters of flood waves have been created so you can imagine once if extinct volcano converts itself as active volcano how destructive it can be so on the basis of this we can either calculate active dormant or extinct clear and on the basis of its uh, intensity clear we can calculate it as endocytic volcanism and basaltic volcanism so endocytic volcanism there are only two types on the basis of its intensity one is endocytic or acidic or composite in nature if you generally see uh, like in the endocytic eruption generally where does endocytic eruptions happen this is the biggest question endocytic eruptions happen at the subduction margins at the convergent boundaries so either it uh, might be continental oceanic collision or oceanic oceanic collision so wherever there is process of collision there we can see this particular endocytic eruption and in this endocytic eruption we generally observe the acidic lava which would be coming out do remember this point a and a acidic lava endocytic eruption so acidic lava have some characteristics what are the characteristics which this acidic lava would be having this particular acidic lava it has maximum silica content because of the subduction which is happening the subduction zone uh, wherever it would be present that particular subduction area will be resulting into formation of more amount of silica content in that particular lava so wherever the <coughs> volcanism happens at the subduction boundaries it would be considered as endocytic eruption and it has acidic lava and that particular acidic lava would be having maximum silica content do remember this point most most important point and wherever we find acidic lava we see huge amount of composite cones like in general what happens is uh, acidic lava as it has high silica content when the lava when the magma tends to come out erupt and when it drop downs of lava the flowage of lava would be very slow because of maximum silica content the lava flows very very slowly and when the lava flows very very slowly we would be ha having accumulation of the magma or lava near to the pipe zone so near to the pipe zone as we have the accumulation of maximum lava we have a huge cone which would be developed that is called as composite cone so huge cones which are developed under the process of volcanism they are considered as composite cones do remember this point and these lavas uh, if you see as i have said they are highly viscous which have a high melting point do remember this characteristic support acidic lava and these are light colored of low density and have high percentage of silica this is also most important point which you have to remember and they flow slowly and they travel far uh, they travel far before solidifying clear so as they move slowly they accumulate near to the pipe surface itself clear so the rapid solidifying of lava in the vent obstruct the flow of outpouring lava resulting into loud explosions what generally happens of because of slow movement of this acidic lava within the pipe of the volcanic magma uh, volcanism we would be having accumulation of acidic lava which solidifies there so when next time when the eruption happens the eruption would be having an outburst volcanic bombs or pyroclast would be created clear sometimes the lavas are so viscous that they form a lava, lava plug at the crater see these kind of lava plug creations would be created like mount pili and martin uh, Nick region an island of lesser Antilles Caribbean islands we can see this particular lava uh, plug which has been generated endocytic lava flows uh, flow occurs mostly along the destructive boundaries that is near the convergent plate boundaries do remember this and coming to basaltic eruption so basaltic eruption it forms near the divergent plate boundary very common thing as endocytic eruption happens near the convergent plate boundary basaltic eruption happens near the divergent plate boundary this basaltic eruption wherever it happens it carries the basic lava so acidic lava is highly having high silica content basic lava would be having poor silica content hence what generally happens is this basaltic lava which is present they are the hottest lavas on that surface 
about 1000 degree centigrade clear like uh, they are highly fluid in nature they flows very fastly clear if uh, like when the volcanic eruption happens in the basaltic eruption zones from there the volcano flows very fastly with rapid high speed clear so if you see this basic lava they are dark colored basalt rich in iron magnesium but they are poor in silica do remember this point so they flow out of volcanic vent quietly and are not very explosive endocytic eruption due to solidifying in the pipe they were explosive but these are not explosive due to their high fluidity they flow readily with a speed of 10 to 30 miles per hour and they affect extensive areas spreading out as thin sheets so wherever we see this basic lava or basaltic eruption we won't find any kind of cone like structures because from the pipe when the lava releases it is tend to like it has high fluidity hence it is moving very fastly at rapid rate so hence we won't find any kind of solidification at the pipe itself hence the solidification happens as a thin layer or a, a particular thin layers of solidification happens either or we would be having a sheet of development like you can see the Deccan plateau which is the example of distribution of basic lava itself clear so if you see the resultant volcano is gently sloping with a wide diameter hence shield type volcanoes uh, which are present uh, like a shield kind of volcanoes which are present they are the examples of this you can see the shield volcanoes uh, the Mauna Loa Hawaii islands of USA it has this basic lava eruption hence we won't find huge cone like structures in this way we would be finding a shield or a dome shaped structures if you see shield volcanoes are enormous features built up only from the layers of the lava they produce lot of lava but they tend not to erupt violently hence we won't find huge amount of structures do remember this point and volcanic landforms if you see like uh, volcanic landforms in general we may have extrusive landforms or intrusive landforms depending upon where the volcanic eruption is happening if the volcanic landforms which are present if they are moving out if they are erupting out we would be finding extrusive uh, landforms if they are inside where we have the where we have the dim, uh, what's so called as solidifying of lava interior of the earth they are called as intrusive landforms so you can see this if if the lava comes out either a cone would be developed or a lava shield would be developed or a lava plateau example Deccan plateau would be developed or like all the common things which I have seen in the first slide those would be developed in general but when the lava tends to accumulate in the interior of their surface if you see a horizontal sheet between the beds of the rock would be developed that would be called as sill or else a dome shaped structure would be developed that is called as lacolith so just remember these aspects beyond this we will be discussing in the mains examination accordingly to the analytical point of view and more deeper knowledge related with this lacolith and dike uh, and sill and if you see like uh, the horizontal sheet is called a sill and the vertical sheet is called as dike and this dome shaped structure which every time have a pipe like connection associated with this this would be called as lacolith here we can say that this lacolith is nothing but a failed volcanic lava now, like failed volcanism in the areas where we have a failed volcanism now, like where the volcanic magma or lava which doesn't come onto the surface there we would be having formation of this lacolith like structures clear so but sometimes what happens is huge amount of lava sheets not entering into the beds of the rocks they would settle in the deep interior which are called as batholith batholith is a huge diameter which extends for hundreds of kilometers so such kind of volcanic deposition it would be considered as batholith clear so hotspot volcanism like uh, just remember one thing because in those areas uh, try to get on to the list of hotspot volcanisms that would be more than enough for you simply hotspot volcanism is nothing but generally the volcanic magma comes out from mantle but hotspot for hotspot volcanism the volcanic magma comes out from the deep core region so it is a type of volcanism that is typically occurs at the interior part of the lithospheric plate rather than at the zones of convergence of diver convergence or divergence so near the convergence or the divergence we won't see this so the iceland hotspot offer hotspot which are situated at the divergent boundaries are exceptions in those divergent boundaries we had hotspot volcanism that's it because of divergent plate boundary we did not had hotspot over there 
clear so hotspot hotspot volcanism explains like if you could see in the hawaii regions in the yellowstone national park of usa we can see these particular hotspot volcanisms in the reunion islands of india also we can experience this kind of hotspot volcanism do remember this point it is highly important for you to remember about hotspot volcanism clear like if you see do remember these points hawaiian hotspot yellowstone hotspot and reunion hotspot there are chances that they might ask you about the distribution of hotspots <clears throat> clear and hope you might have heard about mantle plume because uh, in the upsc mains examination they have asked this question what is a mantle plume and how this mantle plume helps us in understanding about the plate tectonics theory so mantle plume is nothing but a solidified volcanic magma uh, which is coming from the hotspot volcanism which is developed that is called as mantle plume clear so try to read about this mantle plumes apart from this we have hot springs they are nothing but like uh, in general so uh, the hot springs which are associated you can see this like the hot water lakes which are present they are called as uh, hot springs so in the areas where the volcanic magma doesn't come out so they will heat the source of water in general what happens is they will heat the water which is present on the topmost surface so the shallow magma which has reached almost near to that surface will be heated where they would heat the water which is present at the groundwater surfaces clear example if you could see in the ladakh region in the manali region we can find such kind of hot springs and in the world like at yellowstone national park at iceland and north island you can observe these kind of hot springs they are simply nothing but hot water lakes or warm water lakes which are present clear so apart from this uh, geyser sometimes what happens is uh, geyser is a hot spring characterized by intermittent discharge of water ejected as a turbulent eruption that is accomplished by water uh, vapor phase if you see in general what happens is the water after uh, reaching the boiling point after crossing the boiling point we would be having eruption of that particular hot water outside from that land surface resulting into a natural warm water fountain and such kind of warm water fountains are nothing but geysers which are associated with this volcanism itself so where the magma is unable to come out on the surface we would be having either development of hot springs or we would be having development of geysers about thousand geysers exist worldwide like roughly half of which are in yellowstone national park like as i've already mentioned yellowstone national park which is present that yellowstone national park is under the hotspot volcanism belt hence under that particular influence we have development of huge geysers over there in the yellowstone national park if you see the visualization of this yellow uh, castile geyser which is present in the yellowstone national park such kind of some hundreds of geysers are present in this particular yellowstone national park do remember this clear so and hence distribution of volcanism is highly important for you simply i'll be showing it in the figure you ju just remember this figure if you see in the areas where we find convergent plate boundaries and divergent plate boundaries so there we would be experiencing volcanism and 90 80 percent of the world's volcanism you can see this belt is present in the pacific ocean region 85 to 90 percent of the volcanism which is present that is present in the pacific region itself so that's why we call that region as we have continuous active volcanism in those region we call that region as pacific ring of fire got this point and apart from this near to the japan the Aleutian islands would also have the distribution of volcanism uh philippines indonesia they also fall under the pacific belt itself so we find this is one belt belt number one pacific ring of fire where we have distribution of huge volcanism and obviously where volcanism is present there we would be having earthquakes do remember this point clear and if you see there are some other zones where we have volcanism see the volcanism present in and around the great rift valley they are of ex extent in nature so these on the land surfaces generally we find extinct or dormant volcanoes got this point so this do remember this figure which would help you in understanding this clear so along the atlantic coast great african rift valley mid world belt and intraplate local belts so first you have to remember pacific region next mid world belt next along the african rift valley and along the atlantic coast that's it not more than that just remember these key points for understanding about distribution of volcanism
done so this is up the lecture for you so please do uh, click on bell icon to get the continuous notifications and please do subscribe to let's crack upsc csc english channel and also do subscribe to an academy uh, like an academy which is the largest platform india's largest platform where you can crack upsc csc just by sitting at your home if you have liked this video please give a like symbol and also do share this video as much as you can and try to use my code called as vk10 so that you would be getting 10% discount on this particular platform clear hence thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day jai hind